Mareka Decker has been working for more than 25 years in management of the design and implementation of large-scale transformation programs. She is an expert in leading organizations through the transformation process, nowadays applied to the account part of Capgemini University. Mareka Decker is Certified Change Management Master and Doctor in Organization Psychology. Decker was together with Eric Conner in the workshop Whole Mind Leadership to demonstrate how Capgemini worked and also created the course with Eric Conner. Uh, Marika, welcome to Augere. Thank you. As an expert in leading organizations through transformation processes, uh, how can a company detect that it is the moment to, to change? Yeah, first of all, um, I think when a company detects that it's the time to change, it's too late already. Mm -hmm. I think at a moment in time that companies do need to be flexible, agile all the time because, you know, changing economic climates, new markets coming up, new competitors come and go, etc. So when you detect that something's going wrong, then the competition will be far ahead of you and, and move you out of the market. So I think the main thing nowadays is transformation is part of the daily life. And so we do use some parameters, we say, okay, we look at f your financials, are they okay? Mm -hmm. Your organization, is it okay? Or are you too bureaucratic and your time to market is far longer than the competition? Or do you people leave the company? Uh, or are your clients not satisfied and don't buy your product? So that are maybe four things we use mm -hmm. uh, to be agile, flexible, all the time in those four domains. That's so it's a continuous process? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Yeah. And how can companies go for a change in their organization? Do you think? Yeah, well, that depends. It depends uh, where you want to be in the market. Do you want to be the first with innovative products like Apple? Or are you more a follower and you say, well, I, I'm happy when I follow next mm -hmm. and I just copy and paste what others did from Apple and so it depends on where you want to be in the market and which role you want to play but uh, actually you look at those four areas and how you want to make a difference because that I think uh, what's important for companies to make a difference otherwise nobody will buy your products or your services at all. Mm -hmm. Why should they choose you? So it's an added value to the Exactly. And I think also to illustrate today in the workshop, we talked about, um, well, companies who are good, they know how to touch uh, the customer's feeling, intuition, uh, to buy the products. Not because it is, uh, uh, buying is not always a logical process, only going into the brains here. Uh, and you know it may be, I love, I love shoes. <laughs> and well, I want to buy them. And then sometimes there is a little voice in my head saying, isn't that a little bit too expensive, Marika? <laughs> and so that's also how it goes with companies. A good name, a good reputation, people want to buy earlier than having not this feeling that it is a good company. And let's talk about uh, the networks. It is possible for all companies to work together. Which are the options? Yeah, um, when I worked not at Capgemini University, but in ING and uh, in the business of Capgemini, I had some think tanks around a team. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, like the workshop today, people can learn a lot from each other. However, the branch can be different. But uh, nowadays you can learn more from a different branch than from your own branch. Because in your same branch you're the same. Mm -hmm. And so how can I learn as a service uh, provider from a production company or something like that. So it's very well, you have some change principles oak, or transformation process principles that you can apply also across branches across culture and of course uh, when you work together later on in your daily business you can tailor made the ideas that you got how others make the difference and okay maybe I can apply some of the things in my own company so it's also uh, gives you a 
bigger speed of transformation because otherwise you have to reinvent the wheel all the time. You can learn a lot from others. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the learning foundation. How can companies redefine and build this? Yeah. Yeah, I think you know we go away from the old-fashioned learning and development departments who are support functions, cost centers, etc. Mm -hmm. um, how we did it in Capgemini is first of all have the conversation with the business and to say, okay, where do you want to go? What's your challenge? So what are your capability gaps? What kind of people or capabilities do you need? So. Mm -hmm. Give me your top three business priorities, give my top three HR priorities. So this is the top three on learning priorities. That's the conversation that needs to take place to have the right learning to take place and to spend the money on that learning. On the other side, then you need people in the L&D department who can have that kind of conversations. And that is a different profile uh, that L&D people need to learn or to have. You need to be able to talk business talk, to understand the business, stand in the shoes of the business. And uh, that's a different profile from a couple of years ago. And we call it a learning business partner uh, role and mm -hmm. that we are developing that in Capgemini at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, which is the best way to challenge and motivate teams? in organization? Yeah, um, as a learning function we do a couple of things. We do some uh, team building and uh, developments, but we also do transformation programs or organizational development programs or being an expert in my role at individual level. So I think the combination of everything makes it, uh, makes it a winning combination. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, um, but for individuals, we say your professional development is important. For teams, uh, how can you think out of the box? How can you do it differently? Because uh, when the uh, CEO of a company says, we need to be different, and nobody is moving, he can shout and shout, but nothing will happen. So we think the individual, the team level, organizational level, all together make this organizations move limits. I think that's that's the story. Uh, through an innovative learning, what we are were talking before is that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we have some innovative learning is about uh, we have uh, created next generation learning principles and that are three very simple principles. Mm -hmm. We say uh, the first is do learn do so you learn from exercise in doing it. Mm -hmm. The second one is connect to learn. So don't only do it on your own, but connect with others, other companies, other people, teams, leaders, etc. And the third one is, of course, in these time it is techno fluent. So use technology whenever it brings you further. Uh, um, you can have um, learning just in time and not just in case there is a training. You can use it every day. And so that are the three principles that help us uh, to create other ways of learning in the company. Yeah. And these other ways it's, mm, are always uh, oriented to results. I mean, being result-oriented is more important than ever now. Is it or...? Yeah, well, um, it's, yeah, it's correct that we don't do any training if there's not a business topic to, to, to solve because uh, and this all goes together also with personal development of people and what they like. So uh, we do invest in, in people um, but together we're supposed to yeah, keep a business alive in the market and have work uh, to make it very simple. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, result driven I mean it must address a business always. topic. Always, always. And if people want to uh, learn to how to knit, they don't have to, to come uh, to Capgemini to invest in that, because we don't see any sense in knitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as, a, no. as a account director of Capgemini University, uh, finally, which do you think are the main challenges are we going to face in the future? 
Yeah, I think um, I think for learning and development, it is actually a very interesting time because um, to make the difference is all about people, whatever in industry you are. Um, so I think uh, for learning and development, when we do the job well, uh, we can help our companies to compete with others, to make the difference, to do it differently. Um, the challenges are, I think, well, we're here in Europe, that we don't look enough what's happening outside Europe. Emer emerging markets coming up, well, India is already happening, but China and Japan, and I think we're still a little bit arrogant here and say, oh yeah, but that's so far away. So this is a real big challenge, I think. And so um, I would say um, for international companies also integrate this future trends into, well, don't wait till China is here, but what are you going to do business with China? What are you going to do? And, uh, you know, when your first question, yeah, and it's, then it's, it's too late, late, huh? It's too late. So it's not that I'm afraid of it, but I think we should be more proactive in thinking future trends. And then maybe on the people side, uh, the big challenge is the, uh, the new generation coming up who is completely different from this generation. And how can we uh, bond people to work with us also in the future that... Uh, they love uh, working for us, uh, and the next generation's uh, uh, going is completely different than we are now. So it's clear we have to be proactive mm -hmm. in, in companies. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much, America, for, for being here in, in Algeria. Okay, and thank you. See you next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>